What is going on, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of Trading to Glory. It's episode number four, also day number four. And we're going to start off this episode with a quick buy that we have as an investment in Yarmolenko. 83 rated, obviously, Premier League card as we get closer and closer to player of the month. We're going to be wanting to look more into those kinds of investments, guys. But if you are enjoying this series, make sure to drop a like on the video and also subscribe to the channel if you are new. Uh, I don't think the channel has ever really grown this fast before. Uh, you know, we were stuck at 77,000 subscribers for quite a while. And then in just the last couple of days, we've gone up about two or 3,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is absolutely insanity. So thank you guys so much for that. And let me go ahead and show you guys something right when we get started here. Let me show you a great method that I actually talked about in a previous episode already, but I have proof that it works now. So let's go ahead and confirm the items, send that to the transfer list. We have 65,000 coins because if you guys saw in the last episode, we made a lot of investments in Premier League informs but i listed every single one of those cards overnight for more than what they actually go for two of them sold fraser for 17750 and also fraser for 16250 so as you go across you know my jock hand sailor didn't sell that was like 5k more than what he went for Jacques didn't sell that's like 8k more than what he went for jarmalenko didn't sell because that's 5k more than he went for and then a bunch of frasers that i listed up all throughout those price ranges and i even had several listed up for cheaper that's the crazy part is i had 15k there i had a, i had another 15ks over here and those ones didn't get bought yet there was one card that got bought at 17750 guys so lazy buyers are your friend you can wake up with nice 10,000 coins just uh just from lazy buyers when you're sleeping so that is absolutely awesome so we pretty much made 10k off fraser overnight so we're just gonna go ahead and clear those sold items and uh, i'll probably relist these guys overnight every single night until i actually want to sell them on wednesday because what, what what can happen is i go ahead and sell those fraser cards uh for you know 5k profit each and then i reinvest in a different card like yarmolenko i just got them for 16750 and i got another yarmolenko over here for 16500 so i think that's a pretty good deal given the fact that that's a usable card and it's also getting cl uh, closer to player of the month it's also higher rated than ryan fraser lower rated than jaka though but you know i just bought that card for 16750 and apparently uh, Yarmolenko is already up to over 19,000 coins, so that's already 3,000 coin profit, uh, and it'll probably continue to go up. So speaking of Player of the Month, if you guys didn't know when that dropped, it'll be this upcoming Friday on the 28th. That's the day of the full release of the game as well. So if you got a Premier League card as an investment, whether it be an inform like Granite Xhaka, whether it be uh, Ryan Frazier, whether it be Yarmolenko, or it could end up being players like Lucas himself, like the gold card, it could be Fred, it could end up being Andres Pereira. You could just be picking up any Brazilians from any leagues, maybe 83 rated from the Premier League. Maybe it was, uh, you know, Manchester United players because that's a team that Lucas scored against. Whatever it is, guys, the rule to guaranteeing profit is selling into the hype. And what that means, guys, is that means you sell the day before. You sell when the prices hit a peak before the actual SBC drops. Because what happens if you hold those cards until the SBC drops? You're putting your profit in the hands of EA. Do you really want to do that? Of course not. You want to make sure you're making profit, which is why number one rule is to sell into the hype and guarantee the profit. Because I know that this Jaka card is not going to be 14,250 coins come Thursday or Wednesday even. And Yarmolenko isn't going to be 16,000 coins come Wednesday and Thursday. Fraser's not going to be discard price on Thursday, guys. This card is going to be at least 15,000 coins. If not, maybe even higher if we get lucky with how much hype the Player of the Month brings for the first time around in FIFA 19. So that's going to be where we start this episode. I'm going to see if I can find some sniping filters, something along those lines, and build up our coins slowly. And right now, we're just holding on to those investments. So we're working with 65,000 coins, and maybe we can get back up to over 100,000 coins liquidated without selling any of our investments that way we have more to actually invest in throughout this week uh going into weekend league because all of our investments so far are focused on player of the month but you can't forget there's a ton of other things that we got to be thinking about marquee matchups league sbcs weekend league's going to come uh probably first week of october so we got to think about all this stuff and how it's going to affect the market and where we can capitalize uh on our investments so that is going to be the focus of today's video, guys. Again, drop a like if this series is helping you out, if you enjoyed it at all, and also subscribe to the channel if you are new. Let's get started. I want to start by showing you guys a new sniping method. Now, uh, I has Carrot uploaded a video on this, and I thought I would share it, guys. This is a new way to snipe, and it's actually quite effective, but it also increases your chance of getting market banned temporarily. 
uh, to where you can't access the market and you'll have to go over to the web app and use that and you won't be able to do it on console. But it is very effective uh, for when you aren't market banned, guys. So essentially, all you will need to do is start going down on the max price just like this. Just hold your left analog stick down and it starts going down uh, like normal. And then what you want to do is click Y while you're holding it down. Click Y while you're holding it down and then you can just let go. Click A and it'll automatically just keep going down. As you guys can see, I'm not touching anything. Then just go ahead and continue going Y, A, Y, A. And if you're on uh, PlayStation, it'll be triangle X, triangle X. Uh, all you gotta do is just keep clicking that and it'll search very quickly and every single search will be updated. So that is the quickest way to snipe, but also you are very likely to get market banned if you uh, continue to do it that way. But as you guys can see, nobody's gonna beat you with a snipe if you're doing it that way. So. Uh, pretty good sniping filter or sniping method right there if you guys did not know about that yet It's brand new to FIFA 19. It wasn't in previous FIFA's and uh, by doing that I was able to get a couple snipes on DeAndre Yedlin I was able to get this one for 4400 4600 and then obviously the most recent one for 5k and he goes for about 5.5k So we'll make a couple thousand coins total on all those cards combined. So pretty good now I'm trying out a new uh, trading method. We'll see if it works. Basically, I'm taking cards that uh, could possibly use, be, be used in SBCs that require a right winger back, and I'm essentially just position changing them uh, and seeing if I can make an overall like 1,000 coin profit on the cards. But we'll see if that ends up working out. If either one of these sell, if that doesn't work, then oh well, but it's always good to try out new methods and see if those trading methods end up working. So that's what we're doing right now. And uh, along with that, we might be able to even position change Yedlin, but given the fact that he's not gonna be used in any SBCs, really, it's probably not going to be too effective. I'm just going to go and list these cards up for 5,600 coins. I've been listing up my cards for lazy buyers, and a couple more just sold. I picked up another Jaka uh, to get my, uh, you know, investments back up. But these investments I've been listing for higher than what they actually go for, and some of them are selling every single hour, which is absolutely awesome. Right now, Jaka is going for about what is it, 16,000 coins almost. So yeah, 15,750. So anything less than about 14,500 on Xbox right now is is pretty solid but as you guys see right here our Jaka sold for 18,500 and our John Milenko sold for 21,000 and then all of our Yedlin sold there and then I also got my Deep Silvestri to sell for 2,000 coins now remember I spent about 700 coins on this card then I bought a position change for 800 so I spent about 1,500 he ended up selling at right winger back for 2000 so that method it might be slow but it does work and it does make you profit so that's what it is essentially i'm going out i'm buying some right backs that might be used in like the hybrid nations uh uh the hybrid master sbc whatever the fourth one is in hybrid nations um the advanced one uh the one on the bottom right just to, to be clear uh they need a five in the back so you need a left winger back and a right winger back and since it needs 100 chemistry you have to get those players in position and since you have to get those players in position, a lot of people will just want to buy the card already at right winger back. So it could definitely work. Um, as you see, it sold once and I made profit on one of them. But they're not selling like super quick or anything. So I wouldn't say it's like a great trading method. But it is one you can use if you're running out of ideas. But yeah, we sold a Yarmolenko there for uh, for 21 k uh, And I listed another one for 23 k But let's see, can we compare our price from here? Or can we just go check the price of Yarmolenko to show you guys uh if they are actually selling for more than what they're going for or are they actually just rising to that price is it lazy buyers or is the, are they actually going for 21k and as you guys can see right here they're not actually going for like 22k but um for the most part i mean i think yarmolenko is just rising in price a ton so it might be a combination of one yarmolenko is rising we got that card for 16,000 coins and sold it for 22 almost uh, but he also has risen to 20,000 coins so our investments are already paying off they're already rising in price and I think the earlier you're getting in, getting in on these player of the month investments the better um, again they don't have to be informed um, that's just kind of what I'm going for but guys don't don't just copy me blindly make your you know make your own investments uh, based off of what you guys think is gonna work um, you know I'm just going with informs because you know that's that's probably what I I think is my favorite investment but there's, there's so many that i could choose from too uh like i i uploaded a video a couple weeks ago maybe about a week ago before the game even dropped um before we knew the database on different like lucas player of the month trading uh, or investing tips and right now lucas is already up to nearly eighteen thousand coins if you can get this card for less than 15k guys hold that he'll probably be up over twenty thousand coins um, within the uh, next couple of days because I believe they updated his price range. He was capped at 20k. Now he's capped at 40k. They updated that. So they might have just updated it because he was rising a little bit. They might have updated it because they are going to require him in the player of the month. And that is very possible given the fact that, you know, Lucas is the player of the month. So if they were to do a Brazilian team, 
Lucas would be needed. If they were to do a uh, Tottenham team, Lucas would also be needed. If they were to do literally submit Lucas, obviously Lucas would be needed. So all of that stuff is possible. And that's why Lucas is very likely to rise in price, not only into the hype, but also probably very likely to be used in the SBC. But once again, I still wouldn't hold until the SBC drops because that's too risky. He would crash if he's not needed. And even if he is needed um, in a, like a Brazilian team, a lot of people are probably going to find cheaper ways to do it. Uh, you know, some people might use Lucas, but some people might use, uh, you know, Felipe Anderson at Reitman or something along those lines, depending on the requirements, guys. So just be careful and always sell under the hype to guarantee your profit. This has been extremely extremely effective so far by listing up all my cards for more than what they go for every single hour and overnight for 12 hours. Another Fraser just sold for 15,500, which doesn't seem like a ton of coins, but it's several thousand coins more than one what I got him for, which was like 11,000 coins, and two what he sells for, which is like 13,000 coins. So we're getting extra coins every single hour and even if it's only one or two cards that sell every hour, that is totally worth it because it's just free coins. It is free coins and then once we sell them, you now we sold it for 15k. Look at look at how cheap he is. He goes for 13k and we can just reinvest in him if if we wanted to and, and we can get him for cheap again we can get him for maybe 11,000 coins if we can snipe him 12,000 coins on bid um and we can just literally just buy another fraser if we wanted to now i'm not sure if i'm gonna continue to do that uh, or go somewhere else with it but we'll decide that here in the near future but it is working brilliantly so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna list them up again and get another couple free coins that's the jocka that we just had listed up for 18,250 because He's going for about maybe 16k right now, maybe 15 and a half k, and he sold for 18.5k last time. So uh, we try it again, about 18.25. And uh, I want to, I wanted to uh, do the bronze pack method just a couple times to see how effective it is, and give you guys my consensus. And we just listed up a couple cards. So in that bronze pack that we just did, I got these three cards. I got Karazar, who's a CDM from the uh, Bundesliga, or not Bundesliga, Bundesliga two. And then also from Germany, we got O'Connor, who's a center mid from the Irish League and the Bray Wanderers. And then we also got a guy named Cook as a striker in the SPFL Scottish League there. And uh, we also got 100 coins out of the pack. So, so far, we've made back about 330 of the coins total because we quick sold it for like 30 coins. We sold this guy for 200 and then also got 100. So we got like 330 coins out of the 400 back. So if O'Connor were to sell or if um, Cook were to sell, we would actually make profit on the pack, which would mean that maybe the bronze pack method is working decently well right now. I'm not a huge believer in the bronze pack method because to be honest, I do think that it's a very slow way to make coins. And if you know a better trading method, there's no point in doing the bronze pack method. But for any beginner traders and coin makers, I mean, if you guys aren't really getting too into trading, I mean, the bronze pack method is an okay alternative. And there we go. We've already made profit on that pack. Uh, it was actually suggested to me in stream by uh, Unique Riggers, who's another YouTuber. I said, I'll give it a try. And it does seem to have already made us profit, even if it's only a couple hundred coins. But if we were to do that in mass and it works every time, you know, those coins do definitely add up. Uh, honestly, I do still think there are better trading methods, but if you run out of trading methods, the bronze pack method, I guess, is always there for you. It might make coins very slowly, and it's kind of a, like, dare I say, a noob kind of method for trading and making coins, but it's effective. It's just it's just very slow. So yeah, as I said, I'm going to go ahead and up uh, relist all these cards. Uh, I might switch around the prices a little bit, but actually, you know what? They're still selling for the prices they're at. I'll go ahead and uh, lower the Jao Cancelo maybe by 1000 there. Um, Yarmolenko, uh, 23,750. Let's go 23,250. Got him for 16K. That's still big profit. And then we've got all these Frasers here um, for 15K. Let's just go ahead and relist all, and they'll go up for an hour automatically. And we'll see probably in about 55 minutes, a couple more of them will uh, likely sell. For the rest of this episode, I want to prepare the final SBC that we have not done quite yet. And that is the Hybrid Master SBC with an League and nation hybrid it's the toughest one out of any spc in the game thus far and probably of any of the previous fifas all throughout the year hybrid master is one of the toughest spcs to complete so i'm going to show you guys how to do it right now i'm also going to show you guys the trick to getting loyalty on your players because what we saw in tough was we used five players from our club to get those five loyalty and just built the squad around it but for hybrid master this needs 82 rating we just don't have enough of the players in our club yet because obviously we haven't played any games, we haven't gotten anything out of packs, we haven't opened any FIFA points. The only players we've gotten are out of packs from the SPCs. And a lot of the good ones that are 82 rated or above, we sold on the market. So we didn't have those guys at the ready to put into Hybrid Master. But 
we built this squad right here and it got it gets up to 79 chemistry as you guys can see so what i went with up top i went with falcao and i linked it with two center mids from different nations telemans and gullivan all right now falcao is one of the cheapest 85s in the game right now he goes for like four thousand coins maybe even a little bit less than that so that's not too bad but that's going to be our most expensive player nani is pretty much discard price and acuna who is a different nation but for, from the same team again that is a uh, that is going to help us with the chemistry and then acuna very very cheap card right here it's going to be selling for like 1500 coins not an issue at all then we have to link it with an uh we have to link the center back with the left mid from a guy who's from the same nation but a different league from anywhere else in the squad so this has to be its unique league so we went with garai from la liga and use la liga here then at center back what you're going to want to do is just go with a player who's kind of high rated like korluka here and go with it from a league that you haven't used yet and also a country you haven't used yet. So I went with Croatia and with the Russian League. I didn't use a Croatian or a Russian League player for the rest of the squad. Same for goalkeeper. You want to go with a player from a different league and different nation than the rest of the team. So what I did is I went with Norway and German League, Bundesliga right here. And so we didn't, we couldn't use Bundesliga anywhere else in the squad. Then we used Serie A right here by going with Albiol, a very cheap 84 rated, but also is the second most expensive in the team. Then we link that with Pedro, who uh, links with Moses on a strong link. So again, you can kind of see the pattern. It's it's very symmetrical. We went with a you know triangle up top of the same team, different nations. We went with green and then orange. And then up here, we went green and then orange. And then the rest of it's red. And it gets up to about 79 chemistry, depending on the positionings. Obviously, if we were to have Nani at left wing, that would get us up one chemistry and uh, if we had Pedro at right mid, that would get us up one. That would put you at 85 chemistry naturally. That means you need five loyalty with the squad. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go out and buy these players right now for as cheap as I can get them. Overall, the squad should cost me like fifteen to 18,000 coins, somewhere in that range. It'll give us a 50k pack and 12,000 coins in return. So even if we did it for 18k, we get 12k back. That means we're spending about 6,000 coins on a 50k pack, which is totally worth it. But um here's the thing our loyalty glitch isn't gonna our normal loyalty glitch isn't gonna work when we dashboard because it's gonna be so difficult getting back into the game with the glitch for ea access i don't want to have to do that every time but i'm getting told by one of my mods one of my subs in the stream good friend m park is telling me that if i were to do this new trick that he's tried in a previous fifa and in this fifa just recently to make sure it works that if you log out of your account after the scoreboard pops up in the game just at the beginning of the match if you log out of your account it will give you loyalty and it won't count as a loss either, but it also won't dashboard you from FIFA so you can go right back into it. So that is what I am trying to end up doing so that I can continue to join Ultimate Team and not have the EA Access trial uh, not work for me. So that's going to be the rest of this video. And if it works, we're going to end this video with a 50,000 coin pack. So stick around for that. All right, so I went out and bought the team, and I added it to my active squad right here. It doesn't actually matter what positions you have in, but I threw them in the right positions, but, like, you can play there at strike. It doesn't matter. You're just getting the loyalty. And basically what loyalty means is that you've either packed the card or you've played 10 games with them. But one of the rules in this series is that I'm not allowed to play any games. But the loyalty glitch is totally, totally okay. I mean, I make the rules anyways. So I can decide what I want to do. But the loyalty glitch isn't playing games. It's just using them to dashboard and get the to get the loyalty without the game actually counting. So it's not even going to go on our record. So it's still totally fair game. So what I'm going to do, and this is the first time I've ever done this way. Uh, so I'm kind of nervous about doing it because I'm not uh, sure if it's going to 100% work. And if it doesn't work, it's going to give me a loss. So I'm kind of nervous about this, but I'm also, I trust park and we're going to do this here we're going to go ahead and click play match on a single player season it has to be single player can't be online can't be online you go to single player season i believe that it should work on um team of the week as well but we're going to go single player season because that's what park did so we're going to do what park did and we're going to go ahead and join this game but all right so now we're in the game and basically what we do and i already tried it once so it works i can confirm it works the game has started we don't have to wait till the first one we just click that you're going to go over here you're going to click sign out um, and then you're going to sign out of your main account right here, which is the top one for me. And uh, after a couple seconds, it'll say you've been disconnected from the EA servers. There you go. And you click OK. It'll send you back out of Ultimate Team. And then one, once you get into the main menu of Ultimate Team, just go ahead and click on um, Sign In. 
and then you can click on your account to sign in right here. That's my main account. You sign back in and then you can go ahead and join Ultimate Team there and you'll load up. And then let me go ahead and show you guys my record and I'll show you guys my squad um, and uh, the games played. So you need 10 games played, as I said, to get loyalty. And um, we don't want to have any losses on the account because that would be against the rules for the trading to glory. Uh, we're not allowed to have any games played. So um, that's basically what we do. We sign into that game um, and take a look at the record. It's still 0-0-0. Zero, zero, and, zero. and you go to squads here. And this is all the players that we used in that game. So all these guys in the starting 11 are going to have two games played. Should should be. And yes, two games played. Uh, so we just do it eight more times. For a few of them, we're going to have to add a couple contracts towards the end. But that's how you do it. And you just do it 10 times. It takes a few minutes. Definitely takes like 15 minutes to do it. But it's, uh, it's effective. It's not too long. It's not as long as it used to be. Uh, and it's worth it because we're getting a 50k pack and 12,000 coins back once we do all of these uh, games played. Once we get the 10 games, we get a 50,000 coin pack, which I'm excited to open. As you guys can see right here, all the players have 10 games played on their, uh, not the bronzes, but all the gold cards up here have 10 games played. And so we're going to have uh, full loyalty on all these guys, which will get us plus one chemistry on each card. Now we can submit these into the squad building challenge with no contracts on them. That's perfectly fine. I had to add a couple contracts to do the last three games of the loyalty glitch. But as you guys can see, still no games played, still no games on our record. And now the League of Nation hybrid is about to be complete. We get a 50,000 coin pack. On top of that, we get a kit and the coins. We don't care about the kit. We do care about the coins. 12K. Uh, again, we spent like 14,000 coins on this SBC. Let me show you guys the total price of this uh, SBC. 850 plus 750 plus 2K. So we're up to like 3.5. Um, then let's round up to 5k, um, 6.5k, um, 8.5k, uh, 8.5, that's 10k, and then 10.8, then that's plus, you know, let's just go ahead and say 12k, uh, let's go say 13k, and then 13k plus 4k, okay, it's actually 17,000 coins, I must have miscounted the first time, but 17k uh, uh, is what we spent on it. And then we get 12k back just for completing the SBC and a 50k pack, which means we're spending 5k on a 50,000 coin pack, essentially. That's basically what it's saying. We're spending 5k on a 50k pack. As you guys saw, we just went up about 12,000 coins, and we've completed the League of Nation hybrid. There's the kit we received, FIFA 19 number 2 and the 12,000 coins. Let's open this 50k pack. Um, hopefully, we get something decent in this pack. I'm hoping for, like, any inform... Anything that's over 10,000 coins. I'm looking for maybe another Jow Can Salo if we're lucky. All right, here we go. 12 items, all players, all gold, all rare. If you guys have enjoyed this episode, make sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Here we go. I still don't know how to tell if it's a board drop, but here we go. The pack is a board drop. It's German, and it's a gold. Ew, Bauman's really bad. All right, so let's see if we got any other maybe 83s like Gabriel Jesus or something in here. Probably not, but let's check. Not a good pack at all. Uh, we got Jonathan Ta. He's not terrible. Um, I mean, I guess a couple of these guys might sell. Jonathan Ta is going to sell for 3K. Toprock will sell for about 1.5K. In the end, our pack luck, not the greatest. I mean, we did pack Cancelo last two episodes ago, so... I guess I don't have the worst pack luck, but it just it just feels like sometimes, uh, even if I get lucky rarely, most of the time my packs look something like this. Let's see how many coins we can get out of this and work our way up. But we've still got tons of coins. We've made so much profit in the last few days. So, it, you know, you can't be too disappointed. We're going to go ahead and sell these guys. Uh, Ander Herrera, how much does he go for, given the fact that he's in the Prem? All right, he's actually not too bad. He goes for like 5.8K. So, I mean, yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. We'll go ahead and send the rest of the club, and we'll go ahead and get to selling these cards. Uh, let me go ahead and update you guys on my transfers, because one of my Jao Cancelos actually, or my Jao Cancelo did sell earlier for 76,500 coins. We sold a couple Lazy Buyer cards, Jarmalenko and Frazier, and Jaka for 18.5. A couple flips for those gold cards there, uh, and then obviously those were from the Bronze Pack method earlier. So let's go and clear the sold items. And here's what we've got to sell now. We've got one Jaka. Um, we're going to add everything up here. So we got two Jakas, technically. One's still selling right now. So 15K plus 15K is 30K. Yarmolenko is another 20K. So let's say 50K. Uh, so 50,000 coins plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
11 12 Frasers. So we're just going to say 10k each for Frasier. That's 120k plus the 50k uh, equals 170,000 coins plus maybe another 10k here, 180k. That puts us well above 300,000 coins. So 140,000 plus like everything we have on here. That's well over 300,000, maybe 350,000 approximately. So let's go ahead and sell these gold cards. We're going to go ahead and uh, list these guys up for lazy buyers once again. And that's going to be the end of today's episode. Guys, if you enjoyed again, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace out.